Well, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless, bless, bless his holy name. We're here live on Instagram on December the 16th of 2021. It's hard to believe that this is what has been happening. We got two more weeks in this year, and it's over. So let us do what we can to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ in the next two weeks. Hallelujah. That Let's not say, oh, this 2021 was a bad year and we had COVID and we had viruses. We had uh, all kinds of things and I'm so mad and let's just praise the Lord together. Hello, everyone. Join in. Tell me where you're coming from. We got Alan. We've got Amy, Elizabeth. We've got Lilette. We got Tracy. Blessings, blessings, blessings upon blessings to you. Drizzy, Jazz, what's up? There is my pastors, Rick Cassell and Jane Cassell. God's blessings on you. Love those peoples. What's up, Betsy? What's up, Rosie? What's up, Medine? What's up? Oh, here comes Texas. Don't y'all mess with Texas, y'all. We got Sun Valley. We got Arizona. Hello, blessings, love. Hello, hello, Jane um, and Winna type and Amy and uh, we got the Ham family. What's up, Jill? What's up, Karen? We got Sweden. We got Europe. We got America. This is so beautiful. New York City. Hello, hello, New York. Hello, Bella Child of Jesus Christ from the beautiful place of Canada. And we got Doreen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. What's up, Debbie from Studio City? And Kai, what's up? Blessed be the name of the Lord. We're going to praise him. We're going to praise him. What's What's up, Mac David? What's up, Miss Mac David? God's blessings. What's up, Meline? All the way from Armenia. Hello, hello, true London. What's up, London? What's up, Carol? New Zealand's uh, with us, y'all. Joe Grows. What's up, New Zealand's? Blessings on you. Wow, it's a uh, it's wonderful to have you with us. What's up, Beverly Hills, Cali? Fornia, what's up, North Hollywood? North Hollywood, God's blessings on you. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Are we going to have fun, Arturo, Annie? Welcome, Anna. Welcome. It's time to praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, the Jewel Girls here with us. And we got Dr. Herman from Africa. What's up, Tracy? God's blessings on you. We're going to have a good time. We're going to have a good time. We're going to thank the Lord. In fact, let's start praising the Lord. Praising, love you, love you, Cassells. Uh, let's praise the Lord. Let's just praise Him. Y'all ready to praise Him? I know y'all gotta know this song. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given His Son. Oh my goodness, what are these words? They're so simple. It's so simple that I messed it up. Give thanks with a thankful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. Give thanks with a thankful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. We bow before you, Father. We bow before you. We, we're joining angels and the host of angels right now. We're in the, the Holy Spirit has fallen upon us and it is, Holy Spirit is within us. And we, we just want to give you thanks in, in the world of confusion and in the world of darkness and in the world of terrorism and in the world of vaccines and in the world of, uh, of, of hardships and in the world of confusion and the world of, of evil and the world of just not knowing what to do. Do, do we go to the left? Do we go to the right? Do we stand still? What do we do? We give thanks. We give thanks in the midst of viruses and in the midst of sickness and in the midst of hospitals and in the midst of incarcerations and in the midst of rape and in the midst of, of, of failure and in the midst of falling and in the midst of, of messing up and in the midst of, of not knowing what to do, falling short. In the midst of all this, we give thanks. 
We give you thanks because you're worthy. We, you're worthy of praise. You're worthy of glory and honor and power and praise and wealth and richness belong to you, Father God. We give you thanks. We glorify your name. We say you are holy. We say you are good. We say you are righteous. We say you are the King of kings. We say you're the Lord of lords. We say that you reign. You say you're the ruler of the universe. You created the universe by a word. You said, let there be light. Uh, let there be let there be firmament let there let there be mankind and it was so and father you did it all with your hands you did it you created by your hands you created by your words and you created us for your own satisfaction. So we are here to give thanks to you. We're not here to complain at this time. We, we are, uh, forgive us, Papa, because we complain too much. I complain too much. But right now, uh, our hearts are singing with praise. It's bursting out with praise. It's bursting forth with hallelujah. It's bursting forth with saying you are God. It's bursting forth saying all the other gods are not gods. They're just idols. But you are God. You here us. You listen to us. You carry us. We give you thanks because you're worthy. Because you're worthy. Because you're worthy. Give thanks with a th grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ, his son. Notice God is a giver. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. He gives us not only life abundantly now, but he gives us everlasting life. Give thanks. Give him thanks. Let's not, I mean, when I go to Africa or Armenia or Argentina and I see kids that don't have shoes and they don't have a roof over the house, you got to stop and say, look, I've got, I've got somewhere, a shelter to be under. I, I've got food on my table and I know things ain't going right, but I'm, t it's time to give thanks to God for what he has given to me. It's it's time to give him thanks for abundant life. It's time to give him thanks for eternal life. And even if this 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 years or 100 years ain't going to work out just so pretty and everything ain't going to be just straight, we are going to have eternal life with Jesus Christ. We are the servants of the living God. We are super sanctified saints. We are his bride. We are his church. We are his people. We are a holy nation. We are a royal priesthood. That's who you are, and don't you forget it. So when life ain't working right, just say, I'm a super sanctified saint. I belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, and nobody is going to stop me now. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to give up. I still have hope. I will hope in the Lord. I will hope in the Lord God Jesus Christ, and that's how I'm going to carry on, and that's how I'm going to make it in this world, because otherwise I'll fall apart. But because I stand on the rock, Jesus Christ, I am not gonna fall apart. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. May the Spirit of God fall on you. May the Spirit of God inspire you to get up and rise and say, no, 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 it's not time to quit. It's not time to give up. It's not time to say, I, I can't make it. It's time to say, the Lord's with me and I'm gonna do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens me. And any weapons forms against me, whether it be speech, whether it be written, whether it try to be a curse, whether it be an army, though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. I will not bow down to any other God. I will stand up in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. That's what happens when we give thanks. That's what happens. We get strength. When we give thanks, we get strength in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Woo-wee. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let the weak say, I am strong. What, what does it say? Let the, let the poor say, I am rich. Let the weak say, I am strong. Because of what the Lord has done. Give thanks. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise you. We want to stay in this moment of giving thanks. We want to be a thankful heart. We enter your gates right now with thanksgiving. I mean, your gates are wide open. You're the one that tells us in Hebrews 4, 16, that we are, have 
to come into your gates. We come into your throne. We come into the throne of grace with confidence, without fear. We can come in so that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us in time of need. And so, Father, your children need help. Your children have been silent. Your children have been shut down. But now your children are starting to rise all over America, Canada, Argentina, Asia, Europe, and China, and, and Africa. Your children are rising up. There's a a revival happening in our souls and we will not be put down and we will not shut up. We will rise in the name of Jesus Christ. We will not fail. We will not stay in the darkness. We will go into the light of Jesus Christ. And when the light comes on you, you don't walk in the darkness, but you have the light of life according to John 8, 12. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. So we give you praise, Lord. We give you thanks, Lord. And with that thankfulness, we enter your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. And this is your children coming live at you, Lord. Yeah, I know you can see us, hear us, love us. Oh, you're a good God. You're a good, good, good good God. And we praise you. And I know, Papa, you love hearing it. I know you love hearing us say, yes, Papa, you're a good God. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. We give thanks to you, Lord, because you are good. Your love endures forever and ever and ever. Hallelujah to the Lamb of the living God, the tribe of Lu Ju Judah. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's the eagle that flies like in the sky. He is the ox that is the servant of the living God. He is a, like a man because he's the son of God and he knows what you feel. In, Je in Je uh, Matthew 9, 20, I think it's Matthew 9, 36, where he, when he saw the crowd, he had, he didn't run away. He didn't say, Woo, I can't handle them. Uh, bye bye. I, I'm not, you, you too, too much. You, you complain too much. You hungry too much. Uh, you 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 have snot on in your nose. Go on, you ugly child. He don't say that to you. No, what he says, that's my child. I love my child. I'm gonna I am gonna love my child. He had compassion on his children, and he has compassion over you, super sanctified saints. That's what he got. He got compassion. So don't you think God has turned his back on you? If you're listening now or later, and you think God has turned his back on you, he has not turned his back on you. He loves you. He's deeply, profoundly in love with you, and he's carrying you. Even when you don't feel like it, he is carrying you. Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Amen. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. In fact, let the sick say, I am healed. Let the one in the darkness say, I am in the light. Let the one that says I'm tripping and I'm going down say I'm standing up. Let the one that says I am faint say I am going to soar like the eagle. Let the one who says I can't go no more say I have new life in my soul and I will rise on the mount of the wings of the eagles and I will run. I'm not going to be weary. I will walk and I'm not going to be faint. Let the one who says I can't do no more. Say, I'm about to rise in the name of Jesus Christ. And now, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for you and me. Yes, Lord, we give you thanks. Hallelujah. Woo, we can stop right here. But I got a message. I got a message for y'all. I wasn't going to do this chapter. I was going to do something else. And then the Lord says, you better get back to what you were. I said, yes, Lord. And so we're in 2 Kings. Y'all know that, right? We're in 2 Kings chapter 9, which is very far away from the book of Revelation, I might add. But 2 Kings chapter 9 and, and, you know, part of Revelation's in here, I'm just saying. And so 2 Kings chapter 9, y'all know it's about Elisha's time. Elijah came first. Now it's Elisha. And it's about 850 years before Christ. This is about 843 years before Jesus Christ. 
And Elisha, the prophet, called to one of the children of the prophet. So they had like a, it's not a gang, you know what I'm saying? It's like a guild, a guild of prophets. Hello, Lucy Juan. Hello, Bella. Hello, Ignacio B. Hello, good evening, everyone. And some places, hello, Doris. In some places, it's good morning. We got people in the Philippines now listening. And it's 9 a.m. over there while it's 5 p.m. here. Hello, Tracy Bello. It's 9, uh, uh, 5 p.m. here in Southern California. And it's cold. Y'all know it's like 55 degrees and we think that's freezing here in Southern Cali. Well, in the East Coast, they'd be laughing at us and they'd be saying, that's summer. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying Southern Cali people. <laughs> What's up, Magdalene? Okay, so now, Elisha, he's like, he, he has a guild of prophets. They're like little Elishas, if you will. And they're running around. It's 2 p.m. in Sweden. Hello, hello, Karen. Yes, yes. And hello, JYPF. Hello, Vexy614. Yes, yes, yes. Hello. Okay, so now, um, they got like a guild of prophets, and, and he's teaching these little prophets, right? And they're not little, but, you know, compared to the spiritual force of Elisha. Uh, and, and he's teaching them, and he tells one of them, he points to him, and he says, gird up your loins. And um, whoo, it gets minus 15 in Canada. That's insanity. That's just insanity. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, have mercy on, on the people's Lord. Okay, so now he says, gird up your loins, which means, you know, tuck your, the men even wore like a skirt, right? It's like a, a long gown that they wore. And so they would tuck it up into their belt and they, so they could run, their, their legs could be free. Gird up your loins and take the box of oil in your hand and go to Ramoth Gilead. And so where is Ramoth Gilead? It's on the east side of the Jordan River. And Solomon took that land. It's just south of Syria. It's, it's beside Israel to the, to the, if you look at a map is to the right of it uh, but it's it, literally it's to the east side of the Jordan River and and so Israel had captured that land uh, thanks to Solomon but Syria was always fighting with it you know King Haziel wanted that land and so he says go to Ramath Gilead and when you come there look out for Jehu the son of Jehoshaphat this Jehoshaphat is not the king of Judah this is a different Jehoshaphat so he's going straight to a boy named Jehu who by the way is a captain in the army of Israel and he serves Ahab the dirty nasty stinking filthy king wh whose wife is mm -mm -mm. Jezebel. Jeza. Jeza is nasty. Okay, so Jeza and Ahab, and he's a captain, so he's going straight to Captain Jehu, and he says, um, and go in and make him arise up among the brethren and carry him to the inner chamber. Like, don't be announcing anything in front of everybody. Just grab that boy and say, you coming with me, and we're going to go, and we're gonna, I'm going to tell you something. So that's what the prophet's got to do, and Elisha's telling him to do it. And so they, they then take this box of oil, he says, and pour it on his head and say, thus saith the Lord. Um, I have anointed you king over Israel. Wow, a captain is about to become king. And God has anointed him to be king. Now, interestingly enough, this was in 1 Kings chapter 19. And uh, it was around uh, 25, I think, 1 Kings chapter 19, 25, 26, where Elijah was told to do the same. Listen up, saints. Listen up, super sanctified saints. Eli, Elijah was told to do this. He was to uh, anoint Haziel, the king of Syria, anoint Jehu, the king of Israel, and anoint Elisha. He did one of the three. He only anointed Elisha. He was, Elijah was told to do this. He didn't do it. You know why? Well, I don't know exactly the reason why, but it was right after he killed the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 uh, prophets of Ashtaroth. And then Jezebel points her finger at him and say, boy, I'm going to eat you up. You're going to die. I'm going to take you out. And Elisha get all scared. After killing all these prophets on Mount Caramel, he gets scared. He, he be running and he's all depressed. And he's like, kill me. Just kill me, Lord. I just want to die because Jezebel want to kill me. Seriously, Eli Elijah, pull yourself together. And so I just want to say, and I don't mean this in a, in a bad way, but depression takes your life. Depression takes away your anointing. Depression takes away your calling. Depression takes away your purpose. I, I, saints, listen to me. 
Depression, you know, we've got medicine and we've got chemical imbalances and we got all kinds of things. But depression is in itself very self-centeredness because it's all about me. I'm depressed and I'm down and I'm not making fun of nobody. Don't misunderstand. But depression takes away your life and your anointing and your purpose. In the name of Jesus, I curse depression right now. In the super sanctified saints that are listening now or those who are listening later, in the name of Jesus, depression, you leave them alone. You cease. You, you're the mountain. You're the demon that's causing death in the lives of many people. I curse you in the name of Jesus and I put you in the pits of hell and into the depths of the sea. Leave. In the name of Jesus Christ, you decide whether you walk with God in light or you walk in depression. You have to make a decision and shake yourself off and say, stop it. Stop it. I'm not going to be self-centered and think about only myself. I'm going to I'm gonna think about others. And, and this is not harsh words. This is words of love to you. Words of love so that you may shake off things that are bothering you. Now look at Elijah was supposed to do this. He was told by God to do it. He didn't do it because he was in the middle of depression. Depression takes you out. And so Elijah is now doing what Elijah was supposed to be doing. Backwards. So Elijah is now doing what Elijah was supposed to be doing. Child, why they got to have similar names? They messing me up like that. <laughs> so the young man, even the young man, the prophet went to Ramoth Gilead. So he takes off. Listen, he, he, whatever Elisha said, he's like, yeah, he's the man of God. I'm going to do what he said. I'm gone. And when he came, hang out with the right people. Don't hang out with the wrong people. Hang out with the right men and women of God who love God and love his word and listen to the word of God. The news is not the word of God. It's not. This news the Bible is the word of God. And when he came, behold, the captains of the host were sitting. They're all sitting together. All the captains, the, I guess the chief captain, I think, is Jehu. And he said, I have an errand to you. I, I have news. I have a message, O oh, captain. And Jehu said, to which one of us? And he said, to you, O oh, captain. And it, I, he identified the captain, Jehu. And he said, I got a word for you. This is the young prophet of Elisha. And he's coming. And he said, I got a word for you. And he arose and went into the house and he poured oil on his head. Isn't this beautiful? Now look here. In 1 Samuel chapter 10, guess who poured oil on whose head? Y'all remember? Samuel. Samuel poured oil on the head of Saul. Now just because you got oil on top of your head and you're anointed by God doesn't mean you're going to carry out what you got to carry out. It's your choice. Oh my, 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 my. Because Saul was anointed by God. But Saul didn't do what God wanted him to do. And his armor and crown was taken away. Don't mess up your anointing. Don't mess it up. Walk with him, Jesus Christ. And, and then there's another dude. Y'all remember? And it's uh, 1 Samuel 16, verse 13. Samuel gets oil, and where he go? He goes to the house of David. Now, David, his daddy don't even put his name in the hat. Y'all know what that means? That means David had, I think, six brothers, and, and the daddy's like, look at my beautiful sons. They're handsome. They're, they're built. They're like, they gone to the uh, Gold's Gym, and they be lifting weights and bench pressing 450 pounds. <laughs> and look at them. They're beautiful. And Samuel like, one, two, three, four, five, six? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. You got another son? Well, the daddy looking in the hat, and he picking out the names. David's not even there. Hello? David's dad didn't even think highly of David to put him in the hat so he can pull out. Now, they didn't have no hat, and they didn't pull out names. I'm just messing with y'all. But what I'm just saying is David's daddy didn't even think about him. But Samuel was told by God, all these gold gym boys, <laughs> they're not the one. They ain't the right. They're the wrong. Go get the right. And so he's like, you got another son? Uh-huh. 
We're not going to sit down until you bring the right boy. So they got to go fetch David, who's playing with the sheep. And all his brothers like, <clears throat> people laughing at you, rise. When the Lord anoints you, they can laugh all they want to. But when the Lord anoints you, the Holy Spirit fall on you. Ain't nobody going to stop you. David's like, I'm here. Samuel's like, you're the one. Anoint. Oil on top of his head. So just because you got oil on top of your head and the Lord anointing you, you got to carry it out. You got to carry it out. What stops you? What stops me? Depression? Ourselves. Ourselves. It's not about ourselves. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ. Stop thinking so much about yourself. Oh, <laughs> poor little me. <laughs> Stop. Stop it. Say, Lord, you call me to help others, heal others, bring joy to others. Send me. Let's go, Lord. Let's go. I take your anointing. Let's go. So back to our story, beautiful peoples, super sanctified saints. And now he arose and went into the house and poured oil on the head of who? Jehu. Who's he? He is pouring. He is the small prophet or young prophet a learning prophet that's pouring oil on Jehu, who happens to be a captain of the nasty king Ahab in Israel. He's pouring oil on him and, and um, says, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I have anointed you king over the people of the Lord, even over Israel. Bam. God's now talking through him and saying, I've anointed you, Jehu, and you shall, this is God talking through the prophet's lips, and you shall smite the house of Ahab, your master, and I will avenge the blood of my servants, the prophets, and the blood of all the servants of the Lord in the hand of Jezebel. Jezebel. Jezebel sounds wrong. That girl was wrong as wrong can be. So he's like, I'm going to take you out. I'm going to take all of Ahab's people out. We're going to find out in a minute what happens to the unrighteous. Don't be sitting there and going, oh, what's happening? Stop. Stop. He's going to, you know, Jezebel was killing all God's prophets. She had all her prophets, all her little Baal prophets sitting at her table, eating her little delicious foods while all of God's prophets were being killed. And there were some, obviously, that were saved by God, the remnant. And the whole house of Ahab shall perish. And I will cut off from Ahab him that urinates against the wall. It's like, oh my, this is so graphic. This just means I'm going to kill every male son, uh, every son, every male of Ahab's family. I'm going to take them all out, God said. I'm going to take them all out. Not 1% is going to, not even 1% is going to remain. I'm going to take them all out. And him that is shut up by the uh, up and left in Israel, whoever's left, I'm going to take them all out. And I will make the house of Ahab like the house of Jeroboam. This is Jerobo the first king of Israel. Man, so many Jeroboams, but this is the first king of Israel that was in 922 BC. I'm going to take, just like I, I took him out, and the son of Nabad, and like the house of Basha, the son of Ahijah. <laughs> okay, so uh, that's the third king of Israel, and, and just like God took them out, he's going to take Ahab out. And the dogs, like Ruff Ruff, ow, Ruff Ruff, uh, shall eat Jezebel. In the portion of Jezreel, that's where Megiddo is, and there shall be none to bury her. That's a shame, shame, when people can't bury you, and especially in those days, that's a shame. She, the dogs are going to eat her flesh. That's what's going to happen to Jezebel. And he opened the door and fled. And Jehu came forth to the servants of the Lord, and one of them said, Is it well? Uh, why is this mad fellow said to you? And, and, what, uh, and he said to them, You know what the man said and his communication. So Jehu says, You know what he said to me? And they're like, No, we don't. Um, in, in verse 12, Tell us now. And he said, Thus saith, and, and he spoke to me, saying, The Lord said, I have anointed you king of Israel. Straight out, he tells them, I've been anointed, y'all. I got oil on my head. It's ready for me. Ready, set, go. I'm going to be king. Now, uh, later on, not today, we're going to find out what Jehu, now who's the captain, who now has been anointed king, what he's going to do to Ahab and Jezebel. I'll leave that up to your imagination, but next time we're going to go through this. But just to let you know, in Proverbs 14, 11, I'm going to turn there real fast, 
because everybody's worried about what's going to happen to us. And uh, it seems like the darkness is getting darker and the wicked is getting wickeder. And if there is such a word and, and all, all the all the hell that's going around us and I can't stand it anymore. And how come we're not seeing light and how come we're not seeing victory and how come it seems like God's children are shut down and how come it seems evil is prospering and how come, how come? OK, we'll, we'll go to Proverbs 14, 11 to answer your question. And it says in Proverbs 14, 11, the house of the wicked shall be overthrown. Prophecy. Prophecy. The house of the wicked shall be overthrown, but the tabernacle of the upright shall flourish. Write that down. That's 14, 11 of Proverbs. The house of the wicked will be overthrown. Prophecy. Prophecy. And then in Psalm 30, uh, 73, in Psalm 73, as you read it, David's like having a hard time saying, oh man, I, the wicked is prospering. They got food on the table. They are rejoicing. They are killing everybody else. Everybody else is dying down. Everybody else is crying. Everybody else is, is down hunched like this going on. I can't live like this. And, and they're like prospering. <laughs> and where is God? <laughs> God's not going to touch me. God can't touch me. I can't be a widow. I can't be like this. I'm not going down. And, and, and they're like thinking, i got the whole world in my hands and I can, I can crucify anybody I want to. I can take out anybody I want to and I'm getting rich and I'm getting famous and I'm doing this and then pointing their fingers at God saying, you can't do nothing to me. And David's like, that's not fair. That's not cool. Until he saw their end. David like saw their end, which was destruction. Prophecy. Prophecy. The wicked will not stand, but the saints of God will. And we shall follow the story and find out what happened to Ahab and what happened to Jezebel and what happened to the whole family of Ahab. I will tell you one thing. When God speaks, it's final. It's over. It's done. It is finished. And now... Let the poor say, I am rich. Let the weak say, I am strong. Because of what the Lord has done for you and me, we give you thanks. We praise you, Lord. We worship you. We adore you. We love you. We love your word. You're a holy, holy, holy God Almighty who was and is and is to come. I couldn't say hi to everybody. Shira, Islas, hello everyone. God's blessings on all of you that join us. God's blessings on you. May he shine his face upon you. May he be gracious to you, loved ones. May he turn his face towards you and give you his shalom peace, which includes healing and wholeness and wellness. In the name of Jesus, I love you all. We'll see each other very soon. Amen and amen. Blessings. Bye-bye.